patch 1.1.1 dropped on Thursday in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and while it did add the very fun Lucilius raid, it also came with a lot of changes to the game and a lot of balancing changes to the characters. And I'll be honest, I'm not really the biggest fan of this patch from a balancing perspective. Almost every change was a nerf, and while some of it was definitely deserved or unintended, there was also the removal of a lot of cool tech and unnecessary changes, while there are basically no buffs to any characters, and any buffs that were added were fairly minor. Characters that were in desperate need of cat buffs basically got nothing, and characters who got hard nerf got basically nothing in return, which isn't exactly the approach to balancing I wanted to see in a co-op game that had no direct head-to-head -head competitive aspect. Having cool tech and buffing characters to make them feel stronger should be the standard for a game like this, in my opinion. And there are five characters in particular who I think are the biggest losers of this, and we're going to be talking about that in this video. We'll also be discussing all of the combat balance changes and talking a bit about other patch additions, and I'll try to keep it fairly brief, but we'll see how that works. If you enjoy guide content and want to see more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's get into talking about it. So starting things off with a couple positive general changes that the game did have. Apparently the lock-on camera has been fixed a little bit in this patch. The camera was notoriously pretty bad before, often swapping targets when you did not want to switch targets. So it is nice to see that being adjusted and being able to be fixed. There's also been an adjustment to the amount of link time extension that can be granted by attacks, which can cause link time to be extended for longer than intended, according to the patch notes, which means that likely link time does not last as long now, which is probably fine for a change, because I do think link time was one of the mechanics that was very broken if you were able to abuse it properly, and I haven't noticed it to be noticeably shorter by any means. It's still a really strong mechanic that you can use in fights. Any other general bug fixes for combat are basically very specific and do not really matter too much for general casual play. Let's move on to some characters now, because a lot of these characters definitely got a slot of significant changes. First up is Captain. Captain is one of the five biggest losers of this patch, I would say. Captain got absolutely gutted in multiple ways. First of all, you no longer have increased cooldown from having the game at 30 FPS, and if that was the only change, it would have been fine, because that was really cursed anyway. The general cooldown has also just been heavily reduced for Captain, for both the normal arts raising effect and from the unique sigil. This means Captain cannot spam skills nearly as often, which means a pretty significant loss in DPS. On top of all of that, they also decided to gut Captain's SBA gain on most of their moves, making them gain SBA at a slower rate now. I'm not sure why these changes were even necessary, as Captain wasn't even that overly strong before, and the one thing that didn't get patched despite being patched on every other character was the damage cap transfer bug with Overdrive Surge, which still works on Captain and only Captain. But given this was patched on every other character, don't expect this to stick around either. All in all, Captain feels so much worse to use, and is potentially one of the worst characters in the game now, which is very unfortunate. Catalina is up next, and the major change here is that Catalina can no longer perform a skill and dodge cancel early to immediately go into a strong combo finisher to build the Ares gauge faster. This was a tech on multiple characters, and I really liked it, so it sucks to see that removed. Catalina did get a small buff of increased SBA gain on Link attacks when Ares is summoned, but that hardly makes up for it, honestly. Rackham is the next of our five biggest losers. Previously, Rackham had the highest damage in the game by spamming Aerial Shotgun because of the damage cap being obscenely high but this has been absolutely gutted to only do the damage of an auto attack now. Truth be told, I am 100% fine with this change. It was absolutely stupid and definitely not intended. But Slagshot also got hit very hard with the damage cap nerf, which is one of his strongest abilities before, but I don't think this was necessary at all. Rackham basically got no compensation buffs for these changes, going from a character that can hit 80 million 60 second score attacks to only about 22 to 23 million score attacks, effectively making him one of the worst characters in the game since he also lacks utility. While I agree the aerial shotgun strategy was very dumb and lame since it gave him far more damage than any other character, the fact that there was no buff to his intended playstyle really hurts at the same time. While not listed in the patch notes, EO got stealth nerfed by her SBA no longer having a comically high damage cap, which is apparently another damage cap transfer glitch, but that was hard to take advantage of anyway, and other changes are basically some bug fixes and allowing Mystic Vortex to stay, even when hit by a move that removes positive status effects. EO remains very strong, thank you. Oigen, a character who was already one of the best in the game, got zero nerfs and essentially only bug fixes that can potentially make him stronger. None of the bug fixes are super significant, but it does imply grenades should seemingly stick to everything now. Rosetta, who I would consider probably my main, and a character who I thought really needed some damage cap buffs, got basically nothing. Only two very minor bug fixes that don't really affect combat at all. Even on stationary targets where Rosa can constantly hit the enemy like the Dumpy, her DPS could still be lower end, which ideally would be where she would shine. So I was kind of hoping there would be something here. Charlotta was not listed in the patch notes and got zero changes. I guess she was already perfect. Gondagoza is another character who I would like to have seen get some substantial buffs. Instead of that, he also got his damage cat glitches for his Link Attack and SBA nerfed, taking him from over a 40 million DPS and 60 seconds character to a character who does about 23 million damage also. 
But hey, if there's any compensation, he can now transition into Raging Fist quicker after a combo finisher, so that's something, I guess. Now, damage cap transfer buffs are definitely a little stupid and definitely not intended, but like I said, I really would have liked to see a more substantial buff to the character, because he feels pretty slow sometimes and not the best to use, so I would have liked to have seen some more substantial buffs. Fairy is the third of our biggest losers of this patch, having her SBA gain on aerial attacks absolutely gutted, which basically killed her main niche, and as you might guess, there was basically no buff to her intended playstyle, which is pretty bad. There are some bug fixes related to her pets, but nothing that really fixes the fundamental issues with her, and Onslaught still sucks to use. Funnily enough, despite these changes, aerial attacks are still her best DPS, it's just that the SBA gain is pretty bad now, and if you want DPS, you'd probably want someone else who just does more DPS. Maybe you can use her for support, but not having the SBA gain really hurts her since that was the very unique niche that was pretty effective. So unfortunately, she's probably also one of the lower end characters in the game now. Narmaya received basically no changes outside of two very minor bug fixes, and with the nerf to some other characters, she is basically top 3 in DPS now, especially with good butterfly luck, making her a character who actually made out pretty well in this patch. I don't think she really needed to be buffed or nerfed, so I'm glad she was mainly unchanged. Lancelot also received basically no changes in this patch, but honestly, maybe he actually should have received some changes, because Flight Over Fight is basically broken with this character and basically taking over. Even speed kills are now using it, with the fastest Lucilius time using four Lancelots just spamming single SBAs, essentially. Honestly, that sigil probably should not exist. We'll see if anything changes next patch if this becomes a dominant strategy. Vayne can also no longer cancel skills in the combo finishers to build up the beatdown gauge faster, but Vayne didn't really use the beatdown gauge anyway since XXYY is a better combo to use, and unfortunately that has not been changed in this patch. I would have liked to have seen a buff to the beatdown gauge damage caps to make it more worth using, and it kind of sucks that it was basically ignored. Another character I hope they can provide some changes to in the next patch. Next up, we have Percival, the fourth of our big losers. First of all, he lost the Werbo bug, which was the most prevalent and easily usable damage cap bug in the game, and honestly, that's fair. It was really stupid standing still and doing more DPS than every non rockham character in the game, but what really does suck is also losing the ability to cancel skills into fast charge slot, which was a very cool and important tech for Percival. These two changes have brought his damage down from over 50 million to roughly 35 million range, which isn't as bad as some other characters that got it, but it's still pretty unfortunate. Having to use auto attacks to charge when skills are on cooldown definitely feels slower and basically removes any aspect of skill from the character as well, which really is not exactly what I'd want to see from a patch. We'll see if there's any other changes in the future. Sick Free, the character who hits his caps very easily and has some of the lowest DPS in the game and could have desperately used some buffs to his damage caps, got basically nothing. One bug fix that was completely irrelevant to his normal game. Once again, this just kind of sucks in general because he was a character who I really think would have been nice with some buffs but I think he's one of the most fed characters to use at the very least, and he does still have some nice tools for the Lucilius raid, and has great stun power. Cagliostro is one of the only characters who I'd say actually got buffed this patch, with her being able to land her aerial attacks easier, which are actually pretty good damage with her, but then he bug fixes also helping her, so good for her, I guess. Yodara didn't really get any significant changes either. He could have maybe used a few damage cap buffs since he's lower end, but his other tools are very nice for Lucilius anyway, so he's probably doing just fine here. Zeta is the last of our five big losers here, sadly, though I'd say she got hit less hard than the other four. She lost her ability to do more damage when dodging after infinite wonders, which wasn't huge by any means, but she also lost her ability to use Arvis Hammer with only two loops when under the effect of her supplementary damage buff, which I thought was a really cool tech that required good timing to take advantage of, so it kind of sucks to see it removed and three loops being enforced no matter what. This doesn't make her do drastically less damage by any means, but just removing really cool tech and making her have to loop more is something I just really don't like much. Vasaraga can also no longer cancel skills in the combo finishers, but considering the last combo finisher for Vasaraga isn't as good as just XXYY, and most Vasaragas don't run these skills anyway, he basically had no significant changes. This also makes him by far the highest DPS character in the game now since his competition got hard nerfed, indirectly buffing him and making him one of the best, if not the best, character in the game, especially because he can fit the new sigils into his build much easier since he doesn't really need quick cooldown, cascade, or even defensive options as much thanks to Undying. While well, yes, the charge speed is slow, you can still do more damage than basically any other character in basically every fight if you know what you're doing. And finally, Id also cannot cancel skills by dodging into Sword Flurry anymore, which isn't super relevant, but once again still sucks to see the removal of tech in general. And then there were a couple minor, but not super relevant bug fixes. Id is also a character with much lower damage, who I would really have liked to see some buffs for as well. Maybe next balance patch will bring some actual buffs with it for some of the weaker characters, since a lot of these changes were either nerfs or bug fixes. Now, the content isn't so hard that you can't use weaker characters and have plenty of success. I mean, look at me as a rogue Seta and Siegfried main. But ideally, in a game like this, you still want characters to feel strong and not feel outclassed by other options. 
Once again, this is a co-op game, so I don't really think perfect balance is necessary to the same degree as a competitive head-to-head -head game. And ideally, you buff characters to make them feel better in games like this. If you have to nerf something for being blatantly broken like Rockham, give some buffs to the intended playstyle in return. Do these changes drastically change the meta of the game? No, a lot of the general strategies will still apply, and you can still definitely use anyone you want and have success. I'd just personally like to see some more positive changes in the future. As a final note about the patch, once again, they did add these new sigils to the shop that are decent, but they are not as good as you might think they are, and definitely not required on kits by any means. You do get extra damage if you run them, but you also have to sacrifice some defensive or utility sub-traits, and depending on the character, that may or may not be worth it to you. And especially when you're doing Lucilius, you may really want those defensive sub-traits just kind of have the extra survivability. Now, these definitely do have some useful effects. Uh, you can get a lot of benefit out of running them, but they are definitely not necessarily required sigils by any means, so do not feel pressured to run them, and do not worry about builds becoming even more uh, homogenized by these sigils. So it's really just up to you to figure out if you really want to run them or not. And once again, as I mentioned in my other video, make sure you're only upgrading them to level 14 to save on materials. As long as you have the Sigil Booster bonus effect, 28 plus 2 will get you to the cap of 30 for these Sigils, and you will get a lot of benefit out of not using the extra materials to upgrade these to level 15, because you'll be able to grind far less to uh, get the full benefit out of these Sigils. So that is something to keep in mind. You only need 48 tiers total to get all 6 Sigils to level 15, or level 14 if you buy 2 of each, so that's just something to keep in mind. I think that mainly covers it for this video, though. Please look forward to my tier list and last two character guides soon. As per usual, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And once again, thank you for all of the support. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon.